everybody, it's Lavender Town, and lately there's been an app that has really captured my attention and gotten me fairly addicted, and that is TikTok. Now, TikTok is a renamed version of Musical.ly, which I never really got much into, but recently I've discovered TikTok has sort of replaced Vine as well and become somewhat more of a comedy app. So I decided today that I was going to do a challenge where I take TikTok memes and videos and try to turn them into fine art. Um, I'm gonna be emulating different art periods. And for this one, I am emulating Art Nouveau, more specifically Alphonse Mucha. He's kind of the most popular and famous of the Art Nouveau artists, um, especially in modern times. So I thought that would be a good one to pick also just because it is super gorgeous. Now this is based on a meme that was sort of created by a bunch of girls who are just lip syncing along to a song called No Mercy, an Overwatch song by Living Tombstone, who basically just made it to talk about how no one ever wants to play support in Overwatch. Now, this song is legitimately quite a bop, so I recommend you checking it out on your own time. Um, honestly, the worst part about this meme for me is that uh, people chose the least melodic part of the entire song and the one that makes the least sense for an actual Overwatch fan to lip sync along to because most of it is just really cathartic hearing the arguing back and forth and the irony of a Widowmaker asking people to switch. It's all just like... It's, it's very fun. Um, but for a lot of people, the worst part of this meme is that they get really upset that a lot of the girls who are lip syncing along to the song are using a controller that wouldn't actually connect to something that could play Overwatch. And that caused the second birth of the meme. It was reborn as a joke about basically using the worst possible um, setup to, you know, quote unquote, play Overwatch. So there's people like, taping controllers to their face and uh you know just 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 goofing on it and i think that's all pretty silly and harmless fun though i do think that uh some people take it way too far and are like legitimately offended that these girls didn't go out and buy a controller to lip sync to a song for 10 seconds on an app um which to me i, I don't know i mean i think it's a little embarrassing to be that wrapped up in it but anyway, in order to honor that part of the meme, I gave her a PS2 controller. I honestly started getting into a total daydream about what Overwatch would be like on the PlayStation 2. Like, what would that what would that even be? Mostly what I played on the PS2 was like DDR and Resident Evil 4. Um, and I just wonder, I mean, how how would Overwatch's graphics look if they had to accommodate for the PS2? Like, that would be I don't know. I, I kind of want to see that. I love when people like retroify things that are very modern. It always looks really interesting to me. Okay, enough about video games and memes. I have to talk about the art now. So I am lining with a sepia brown color because when you look at Alphonse Mucha's art, um, I'm not sure it, whether it was by choice or just by the way that the printing process and the illustration process worked back then, um, it's definitely not a hard black that he's using. I wouldn't be surprised if he sometimes backed off from the hard black just so that it had a softer look, though he really is uh, a pioneer of having line art as a concept, at least in Western illustration, because before that everything was really painty um, and he really managed to sort of marry the concept of like Japanese line art, um, which was Japanese art was becoming very popular in the Western world around this time. So he saw that and he really liked it and so he blended it with the soft painty kind of Western style um, so that you could get these like strong graphic shapes. Basically, if Alphonse Mucha didn't have a weeaboo phase, who knows what Western art would look like today. Speaking of Japan, there is a meme going around on TikTok that is in Japanese, and a lot of Japanese creators have been uh, sort of spreading this one around, and that is the Dame meme. Um, a lot of people I don't even think understand what they're saying, but it's such a cute little acting challenge kind of thing that I think a lot of people don't even care. Um, but basically, the idea of the meme is that you're just saying dame, which means no good or like no or that's bad, basically, um, in different voices in sort of different characters. Explaining memes is hard. Let me just show you. Dame. 
So yeah, it's kind of just an acting challenge where you repeat the same line in different voices according to what the other voice is telling you to do. So you could say it cutely, say it in a sexy way, say it in a normal way, that kind of stuff. And there's definitely been some intriguing iterations already. So since this is a Japanese meme, I decided to go with a Japanese art tradition and I tried my best to mimic ukiyo-e art, um, classic woodblock Japanese art. Um, it's a little bit difficult to merge together the modern and the traditional and I found that also in the Art Nouveau as well. It's just like, it's really weird trying to draw headphones and normal clothes on characters that um, I only have reference for them in very classic outfits and stuff. Um, but I wanted to give her this loose fitting sort of simple dress because when I went to Japan that seemed to be very popular. Um, you know, I didn't actually see a lot of meticulously detailed stuff. I saw a lot of very classy and simple and loose fitting clothes. I wrote Dame across her chest in katakana and then I did just a bunch of like no symbols along the bottom of her dress, and with that she was done. This next one turned out to be such a monumental failure that I almost didn't put it in the video, but I ended up spending so much time on it, and I feel like I should show you guys when I mess up as well as when I do okay, because, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like I've been doing YouTube long enough that I should be showing you my failures as well. Um, so basically, I wanted to do a sort of Renaissance style, um, you know, the saint painting tradition with the... Uh, Devil Town meme. I don't even know if it's a meme at this point, but it's basically just the same similar performance of a voiceover of the song called Devil Town. Um, and it's pretty catchy. It's kind of sad, um, but there's a lot of filters that go with it. So people have sort of mastered the perfect um, TikTok filters to use with the song so that it sort of animates and becomes really interesting to watch. So um, basically it starts with a uh, split screen of hot and cold and then it just sort of follows along switching the filters to match the lyrics. So I mainly wanted to focus on this split between hot and cold because I thought that would be really visually interesting. I pictured it in my head looking super good. I'm just, I'm so sad it turned out so badly. It's been such a very long time um, since I've done this sort of, you know, careful sculpting of uh, painting and stuff, and I'm just, I'm just not very good at it. Like, I, I wasn't even back in school, but at least back then I was, you know, practicing regularly. Uh, right about now, it's just like an utter mess, um, so... Uh, I hope if you guys are having any art related struggles that uh, you don't feel too alone because um, yeah, we all we all have these days where things are just not not looking right. <laughs> Um, so my main inspiration for this were mainly pictures of uh, Mary, uh, like the Virgin Mary and uh, female saints and stuff, and then I just tried to keep looking back at the videos and incorporating the filters in a way that would look cool and artsy and stuff. I mean, that was part of the issue is like, you don't do surreal kind of stuff with these Renaissance paintings. I mean, you could do stuff that alludes to the religious canon that you're sainting someone from, but you can't just be putting weird snow on their head and stuff. Like it just looks, it just looks not uh, part of the part of the era. Um, so that was that was one area where I was having trouble. The other area where I was having trouble was just that I can't freaking model realistic skin textures anymore. Okay, I've decided sometime in the near future I'm going to do another realism challenge and spend as much time as I need to on it. It's always stressful trying to spend too much time on one particular part of a video that has multiple drawings in it, but I feel like if I do another realism challenge I'll be able to sit down and put in my full effort and we'll see what I'm able to come up with then. So tell me you guys, what is your favorite meme or TikTok video or Vine or whatever right now? What makes you laugh the most? Because like I said, I've been a bit addicted to this kind of content lately. Um, so I'd love to hear if you guys have anything new for me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I certainly did for at least part of it. Um, the last part was a little rough, but yeah, look, failure, it makes you stronger. It makes you a better artist. So it's all good. Uh, I will see you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a very good week. Big thank you to my patrons, including Cal Pompone, Dr. Casket, Elizabeth Album, Hope Chilsom, JJJ, Blep, Le Blah Blah Blah, Micah Dactyl, Okamore, Ali, Poo Pooik, <laughs> Rachel Singh, Rosie Warlock, Sergeant Pendulum, The Artsy Moose, Yo Boy ST, Zixith, and Zoe Stardust.